Conditions in Texas are about as dull as they could possibly get. So I'm going to give you a taste of winter. This is footage that we got back in January and February during a very brutal cold snap here in Texas. Two of them, actually. Let's take a look at the surface map and, wow, looks about exactly like Friday. Got this polar front up there in the western Midwest region through the central U.S., Kansas, and Colorado there. You can see the north winds back there in 71 degrees at Burlington, Colorado, contrasting with 100 at Dodge City. Also warm in the Texas Panhandles, mid to upper 90s in that region, and we've got 100s starting to appear once again in the southwest U.S. Cooler weather, fortunately, in the Pacific states. Pacific Northwest up there, 70s, up there through the Great Basin Deserts. On the other hand, on the East Coast, more of the same. Tropical, humid, sultry weather, all the way up to Maine, where we've got 88 degrees at Portland, and a few 90s showing up around Ottawa. And then looking at the North Pacific, Alaska, and Western Canada, this is a rather potent system coming from the Aleutians and the Gulf of Alaska that's going to come into British Columbia over the next day and bring some clouds and rain to that area. Continued mild up there in Alaska, lots of 50s covering the state with this band of rain and a little bit of snow up there north of Yukon. And then poking our head out east, yeah, there is some Cold polar air locked up in the high Arctic, 30s returning to that region, and these are midday temperatures, with, uh, let's see, 45 all the way down towards the former dew line, where there used to be the radar network spanning the Canadian high Arctic. Some of that cold air extending all the way in the Hudson Bay region, you can see that cold rain up there in northwestern Ontario, and we finally cleared out some of that hot weather. We had 90s once again in the Goose Bay area, it might have been 80s last week, but anyway, much cooler through that area. And even Newfoundland starting to get some of that cool weather invading from the north. Not much going on in terms of the tropics. However, we are looking at a couple of ominous changes. Let me break that down and show you the five-day outlook. And you can see we're going to be seeing some development as we go through the remainder of the week. The most important one is going to be this system down here in the Caribbean. Let me see if I can show that to you. There you go. There's the hemispheric, and we're looking at that easterly wave approaching Jamaica. The GFS indicating some development as we get into Thursday and Friday. See that right there, 10.06 millibar low approaching Belize and the Yucatan and crossing across the tip right there around Saturday. And then we get rapid deepening over the Gulf of Mexico, and it really bottoms out these pressures down to 944, 939 millibars as it approaches Louisiana on Tuesday. The European model handling that very similarly. So this is going to bear close watching for Louisiana, at least. But considering this is about six days out, this entire area could be under the gun, and I would not be surprised to see deviations on either side. So the entire Gulf of Mexico does need to be on high alert. So here's the GFS Ensemble members for Invest 99 here, and you can see there's not great agreement between all of these. Some of the tracks even go up into Texas. Right now, there's just not enough information. So we'll continue to keep a close eye on that. That's about all we can do right now. However, the fly in the ointment is the agreement between the deterministic solutions. Those are run at high resolution, and those do track up into Louisiana at this time. 
There's the sea surface temperatures in the Gulf, widespread 86, 30 Celsius, through much of the western basin. As far as sea surface temperature anomaly, the entire Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico above normal. Plenty of heat available for that system. And the ocean heat content looking quite rich from Jamaica up towards the Yucatan and also up in the northwestern Gulf. Lots of values of around 100 and some way up near 150. So we will revisit that on Friday. And of course, we'll make sure there's nothing unusual going on with these other disturbances out in the central Atlantic. And with that out of the way, we'll come back to the U.S. here and look at the 500 millibar chart. This is a very important chart this time of year because it not only reflects the locations of heat waves, but it also shows the prevailing weather pattern and the steering flow. What we see here is a very progressive flow with strong winds up in the north central U.S., especially around Minnesota and North Dakota. The jet stream looking something like that. And you can see down in Oklahoma, got an upper level ridge right there. So conditions quite hot. No wonder Dodge City is getting 100 degrees. The axis of that ridge runs about like this. Much stronger off the North Carolina coast and much stronger across the southern plains. Down to the south, we have easterly flow. Now, depending on how much moisture there is available and what the profile is in the mid and upper troposphere, that can help support thunderstorm activity. Unfortunately, it's quite shut down, and the only places where we get into thunderstorms are down in the deep southeast. And of course, you can also see the tropical flow, the waves making their way eastward, some stormy weather there in the Keys with this easterly wave moving east to west. And let's see what happens very quickly over the next several days. Yeah, look at that easterly wave moving it across Florida. So by Friday's webcast, we should see that, well, it's weakening a bit, but maybe a trace of it right there through Georgia, Alabama. It looks like another one we're picking up right there around Houston. So we may see some storms emerging in South Texas for that video. And then going into the weekend, a little bit of a change to the ridging. You can see a very strong 594, 595 decameter high centered across North Carolina. The jet stream up to the north still flowing through that region. You can see that. 60 knot flow there at 500 millibars, but just kind of light and variable throughout the southwestern states and Texas. And here comes that next system that's likely to be Ida, Julian, or Kate, depending on which of those three systems comes together first. But uh, as we mentioned, that will have impacts somewhere in the Gulf, probably the western Gulf, and the GFS indicating actually a little bit of recurvature westward. A little bit of a hook across Texas, the European model not indicating that, but the GFS is doing that. And we did see that happen with that other system, Henri, in New York. So we'll kind of keep that open as a possibility. This is around Friday next week, the 3rd of September. So that could shape up to be interesting for Texas, but right now it's just speculative. But we can see the overall pattern. Ridging in the southwest, ridging across Florida and the Gulf Coast. So continued hot in those regions and up north, changeable with occasional periods of precip and thunderstorms. Just trying to make things a little more interesting. Let's take a look at those lows for tonight. In other words, for tomorrow morning. Some areas are going to break records. Not in the south. In the south, it will be hot. 80 degrees at Dallas. 
That's going to be pretty sultry, but that's not going to break any records. In the northeastern U.S., on the other hand, we will see records shattered in Maine. 67 for a low up there north of Portland. Saranac Lake, New York, coming down to 66. And Williamsport, Pennsylvania, dropping to only 71 degrees. And we will be tying records all the way from Detroit out towards Westfield, Massachusetts. For afternoon highs, it will be hot in the mid-Atlantic region, mid-90s, and coming up to 96 there at Lynchburg, Virginia, tying a record for the date. In the southwestern U.S., those hot temperatures are coming back 114 to 115 from Yuma, Imperial, up towards Lake Havasu City, but those will not break records for the date. And I did take a look at Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Nothing really important. I think the only thing we'll be facing is that hurricane coming up from the south, and there will be less emphasis on temperatures. So let's put it all together and take a look at the forecast. Now, I would mix things up and use the European model just for a look at that. However, it does not really do well with convective-driven situations, boundaries, that kind of thing in the U.S. So we're going to kind of look at this. We can see that we have lee side troughing and a heat low across New Mexico, Colorado, up into Wyoming. There's that front up there in the North Plains and extending up into the Newfoundland region. A couple of easterly waves drifting along the Gulf Coast. We talked about that earlier, and that looks like one of them right there near New Orleans. And let's go into the next couple of days, run things forward. Looks like by tomorrow, a flare up south of Louisiana with that easterly wave right there in the other. Looks like that's it in Florida. And up to the north. Yeah, warm front lifting north and giving us a good chance of thunderstorms in Minnesota. Got the low-level jet kind of running like that, feeding those storms. Storm Prediction Center. Going for a slight risk anywhere from northern Iowa out towards South Dakota, so maybe a little bit further south than what the GFS indicates. And the GFS indicating that that convective complex will be moving southeast along that boundary there with more development back towards the west. And probably a good overnight MCS moving towards the Quad Cities, Madison, and Chicago and dying out from there. And for Friday, return of the easterly waves. Looks like a little bit of activity there flaring up south of Louisiana once again and off the western Florida coast. And enough moisture working back up into the north New Mexico area to produce some upslope storms on the Raton Mesa back down towards the mountains northeast of Albuquerque. Then going into Saturday and Sunday, we see that tropical storm or hurricane emerge from the south. Not much change in the pattern up north. We have a new front moving in from the Dakotas. Also looks like a convective complex there in the D.C. area. That formed, yep, late afternoon, northern Virginia. And then for Sunday, kind of quiet across much of the country, but that hurricane is coming up from the south, and it will be the talk of the news this weekend. I guarantee it. And that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank Bob O'Neill for the generous contribution to our channel. Bob, I'm glad you value the content and uh, your contribution is very much appreciated. And for everybody, we will see you here again for the Friday edition. Take care and we will talk to you then. Bye-bye.